Okay, so we can start then. Uh, my name is Erwin Rusi, and uh, I'm going to talk about my latest hobby slash project slash potential business idea, uh, mapping the world lit literature. What I mean by that is getting all the books and putting them on a map. So, a little bit about books. I don't know really how many books there are in the world, but Google says there is about 130 million of them. Uh, they, they announced that in 2010, and they started digitizing them, uh, but uh, they were stopped by the courts. Uh, they, they go to about 60 petabytes of data, but nobody can see the data, which is very unfortunate. I would really like to see the data. Um, that was the case that brought it to an end, Authors Guild versus Google. And there is many other similar projects, uh, Hathi Trust, Open Content Alliance, Project Gutenberg, just to mention a few. <clears throat> My main goals are uh, to analyze all available books that I can find, uh, books that are available in a text format for locations, place names. Basically, I'm scanning books by a program and I'm extracting and disambiguating uh, location names in a, in a city names in a location context. And then organize these books into a nice interface where, let, where I can let everyone add more books to the map and grow the project. And my main goal actually is to improve the geoparsing quality on uh, Geocode XYZ, which is another one of my business slash project slash hobbies. And of, obviously, I don't want to get sued. Um, I have been sued in the past for copyright infringement. It's not a nice experience to go through. So I want to avoid that at all costs and get going with my goals. So my main motivation is I want to ask which books talk about places around X and Y and in what context. Well, what are they saying good things, bad things? And I also want to know, for example, what's the popular setting of romance novels or techie books or, I don't know, horror <laughs> books, if there is such a category. And in general, I want to examine the connection of literature to the physical world. And also maybe like build one of those maps that you see sometimes people post on Twitter feeds, uh, brilliant maps like, uh, what is the unexplored world of literature or places that nobody has written about? <laughs> or places that people write about most often. Um, so the features that I'm really aiming for is that the, the project has to be language independent. It has to scan books in any language, whether Chinese or English or Albanian, and extract those location names, no matter in what language they are written in. Um, the second one, it has to be accurate. Um, there is a lot of ambiguities in location names. Sometimes there are people's names that sound like location names. Paris Hilton versus Hilton Paris, I don't know. <laughs> Which one is it? Um, and it has to be fast. Um, now, the last one is the really hard part because geoparsing is a very slow process. It needs a lot of memory and a lot of CPU uh, if you want to do it right, of course. If you want to achieve the accurate and the language independent, then uh, you need a lot of those things. So those are the three features that I want this project to have. Um, here is just and I, uh, how it works, I get the book, I scan it, I break it down in certain paragraphs, and then I feed it to a GeoParser text, which is a CPAN module I wrote. It's actually a wrapper around Geocode XYZ. And let's say you have that paragraph over there, which was taken by the Count of Monte Cristo, uh, a book that I found on Project Gutenberg. And by scanning it, I get something like this. Uh, obviously, Rusa and Jack is the one that this, this thing is talking about mostly uh, the club in Rosa and Jack and everything. Um, there is also Paris, but this is second uh, priority because the most likely location is the, the street in the city. And obviously Bordeaux is kind of mentioned there too, but it's not central uh, to the story. So the context here is Rosa and Jack Paris. This is the idea that the software has to determine the most likely location in that context. Um, why don't I use some other NLP system? Like this is the Stanford uh, Core NLP. It's one of the best 
system that exists for uh, tagging um, loc uh, named location entities in text. Uh, who can spot the problem with this? Uh, well, you see that Rusa and Jack is tagged as an organization. So that, uh, I couldn't really find any other NLP system that did a good job at this. So that's why I have to build my own uh, in Perl. And basically, this is uh, just a screenshot from my uh, web interface. And it highlights the ones that is the most likely. And it's also using knowledge from prior iterations. I will dwell a little bit more on it later, because that's, that's very important in order to improve the, the, the whole process. Mm. So the devil is in the context. The context changes. You, you have, uh, the, your program has to understand what kind of context uh, you're in. And, and the context changes throughout the book. Maybe in that particular paragraph, is talking about Paris and Rousseau and Jacques. The other one, you'll be talking about Bordeaux. So uh, that is also, the location is also what provides context. So these two feed each other. Um, so how the software de determines context is a complex process, but I just thought I would give you some of the main ideas. Let's say if Paris and Seine uh, are mentioned here and there, then you know, that's a signal that can be taken into consideration. And uh, also, you can see how the setting moves by the distribution of these markers throughout the text. Um, by learning, the thing is, if you do the first pass, it's never perfect, it's never exactly accurate. But in the second pass, you can pick up some of the mistakes of the first pass of the geoparsing. So there is a city called this in France. So if you parse like a thousand books, every one of them has a location named this. <laughs> well, this is the obvious example. Uh, and there's many things like this, <laughs> pretty much. Um, but uh, the software will pick this up in future iterations, obviously, because you will have this knowledge already stored there. And the second iteration will have less uh, these locations there in a location context, because it will look for France, it will look for other pointers that actually, OK, this is really talking about this France. So the more books I scan, the better the geoparsing become. That's why uh, I'm so unhappy that I cannot get those 60 terabytes of Google digitized books. But whatever I can get uh, is there. And also, if you use geoparser text, the more you use it, the better it becomes, because it retains all the knowledge of the previous uh, work. Um, I also use the genetic algorithm approach. Um, if you want, you can uh, go to my CPAN uh, profile. I wrote uh, with a student of mine when I was teaching a few years back in Albania. I wrote a uh, genetic algorithm from a traveling salesman pro uh, problem. And basically, I'm using a variation of that to, to attack this particular problem. Genetic algorithms are great because you give them something to optimize on, and they keep working in incremental step until they get the best. For example, the fitness function could optimize around finding the minimum number of location overlap, the minimum number of this is and that's uh, across different texts that shouldn't have these overlaps. And also, it also detects things like, OK, some words, um, some city names, locations uh, cannot be together, like Vlora and Kathmandu. Well, Vlora is a city in Albania, if you don't know. That's where I was born. And Kathmandu is the capital of Nepal. It's highly unlikely that you'll find them in the same text. But Vlora and Tirana, which is the capital of Albania, will be. Or Amsterdam and Rotterdam will probably be in the same text, but not Amsterdam and Kathmandu. So that's, that's the general idea. The data, like I said, the data is what I'm really struggling to find here, but there is OpenStreetMap for maps, for map data. There's open addresses and geo names for the geoparsing part, for XYZ. And then there is Project Gutenberg, and there is a, another of my projects, fictionpad.com, and whatever else I could uh, come across. And the software. Uh, which I've been building myself. There is a lot of, a lot of NLP or stuff on Perl, but even the Stanford core NLP no, is not perfect. Right? So if you've got to do it, you have to do it yeah, by yourself. And I'm using various bits and pieces I can find on CPAN. 
and I have that uh, module there that you can use to test. <clears throat> How I'm paying for these hobbies? As you might have guessed, I have a lot of hobbies. Not all of them uh, pay the bills, but some of them do. Uh, so I basically sell Geocode XYZ as an API, and some people buy an Amazon server if they don't want to have a throttled access to my web server. And that's how it works. So there's some clients that do mapping, search indexing, social media monitoring. There is one, for example, who just feeds uh, Twitter uh, statuses to the API. And they want to extract locations from them. Whatever people want to do. It's all text. And you get text and you get locations. So this is just a screenshot of how the project basically looks like. At, at that point, there were 49,900 books had been scanned. Um, uh, there should be a little bit more. So, I'll give you a demo. If how I'm doing for time? Uh, it's lunch now. But okay, I'll, I'll go very quickly. Um, if we have time, I'll give you a little demo of the of the actual application. Um, so, I also want to do some other things that I haven't done yet, like API, so people can access this via API. Build an app, for example, and you can go someplace and see books that are talking about Amsterdam or Gihon, where I'm going tomorrow, which is this city without roads for cars, at least. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's for people who travel. Might be interesting. And I haven't really gotten around to extracting other entities, like points of interest, people's names, organizations, and whatnot. It's a lot of work to improve the model and run more iterations and repeat all those steps. Um, Next, my next project will be song lyrics. Uh, after I'm done with this, obviously, which will probably take a long time. Anybody knows this song? It's from Beck. What's that? Um, so now it is time for the demo. Um, can I? Yeah, double check. This is yeah. yeah, change it for this. So you'll get this not secure thing here. Okay. I'll get around to that. Why is it only in one corner there? Oh, wait. Yeah. Okay, well, so you get the idea. Let's say <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of books here. If you, uh, if you click on one of those little circles, it should zoom in. Okay. This is Japan, I guess. And you click on the book. Okay, there's this book here, there's all these locations. You want to see what context they are mentioning. And this is like a, a section of the book that talks about that particular city. And then you can, uh, I guess, see the whole, the whole book and where it's mentioned here. And also there is at the very corner, well, you can also search for books, for example, uh, um, I don't know. Anyways, before we go there, um, there is also uh, like a sitemap. If I have it open here, I will save you a lot of time. Wait. Oh, this is me trying to figure out how to play this keynote. Oh, sitemap. There you go. So basically, sitemaps are fun because it just breaks down every single city I've been extracting so far and how many books mentioned that city and whatnot. Oh, is this stuck? Okay. So US is obviously the most mentioned country and France and Canada and whatnot. I mean, this is biased because it's whatever book I've been able to find and a lot of them are old uh, books that are on Project Gutenberg. So uh, I don't know, like Amsterdam, there's 104 books that mention Amsterdam in my database, it's rare. So if you click on that, then you should probably go there. Uh, you'll zoom there, and, and if you click on the name here, you'll see all the books that are mentioned in Utrecht in, in some way. So anyways, this is where I'm at. Um, I guess I invite you to play with the API and uh, see what else you can do with it. And how can I switch back? Oh, right. <laughs> That's the end of the talk. I'm Mervyn Rossi. This is what I do. My Twitter feed is there if you want to follow me and send me a message. 
and the API of the geoparsing is, is a geocode XYZ. Go ahead. Have you made any attempt to cross-reference the books against their popularity? No, I, I don't even know where to find the data. Amazon? Okay, good idea. Amazon has everything these days. But they don't give you the text of the book. But you find 128 books on um, Amsterdam, you think I want to read one of them. Um, you'd like to read one which other people have rated highly, or a lot of other people have read, rather than one which got three people reading it because it was absolute rubbish. Oh, OK. It's actually a new business idea. Maybe I can charge Amazon a referral fee for that. A lot of books are very old, to be honest. Most of your books are not being sold anymore. Oh, they are in, in Project Gutenberg, like the ones that you see here are, are mostly there. Um, so I, I guess you can get them for free on Amazon, on, on Kindle at least, but not the hard co cover. <coughs> Source for, for this parsing is only Gutenberg? Or? Well, people can upload books too, not just Gutenberg. And I have a, another project of mine that I have a fan fiction website. So I try to parse all the fan fiction stories that people write. Yeah, I'm part participating on Wikisource.org uh, website, uh, which is Wikimedia project. It's about uh -huh. uh, free, free books and text. And for example, French Wikisource project is the biggest project uh, on world. Uh -huh. yeah, and there are many, many, uh, many texts which are free. Yeah, it's That's great. Uh, I didn't know that. Idea. Uh, should check it out. Yeah, I, the more books I can get into this, the better. So that's that's a good idea. Thanks. Well, there are many many other projects. In Czech Republic, for example, there is a National Library project uh, which digitizes every books in in libraries. Uh, hmm. There are many many these huh. projects. And nice. Well, my password is three letters long. <laughs> it's the same letter repeated three times. I'm that lazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's tough because I, I was thinking, how would this website look like if I have a million books in there? I only have 50,000 right now. That'll be awesome because that would really be complete. Like right now, I only have nine books about Japan. Uh, but there will be way more than that in reality. Passing the fictional books to like fantasy. How are you going to deal with, say, say you've loaded every book? How about a lot of older references? Um, you know, Naboo would come quite high on certain books. <laughs> <laughs> how are you going to pass out people talking in a fictional book to talk about a real place where they're actually um, mixing memories into a fictional book and actual real fictional places? All those occasional writers who do things like make an alternative London <laughs> that use real locations. Uh, that's a tough problem to solve. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I'd give you a tough problem. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you're measuring fictional locations, well, uh, the data that I have for geoparsing is not fictional data. Mm -hmm. So if you're using fictional location and you match it against that, you're probably going to raise some flags in the algorithm. But, but um, yeah, if you were using, say, uh, what was it, London? Mm -hmm. with fictional books with vampires in Victoria, London, and you just real locations. Okay, real so, locations. So you can pass and go, oh, so I'm in Whitechapel, that's where Count Dracula first slaughtered his victim. <laughs> What's doing Count Dracula? So this will raise a flag in, in the software because software will expect Count Dracula to be associated with Romania somehow yeah. due to other signals. It's actually going to be more associated with Whitney if you go off the um, non fiction book, though, because the author of Count Dracula wrote books. I don't know, you'll, there'll be many interesting the things. It's also the truth with historical books. Like sometimes they mention locations that have either changed names or they don't no longer exist. Yeah, I was thinking that you know, there's could be issues with things like Troy, of course, which was considered fictional. Mm -hmm. Until uh, Schaffenberg went from Palmer down the place. <laughs> it's there. It's in the map too. You can, you yeah. can Google Troy in 
and yeah, find the location. You can find it, but older books don't actually reference where it is. They have it, 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 it's fictional. <laughs> like, so it's just going to be interesting uh, educated case problems to have. It's wondering if you've already thought that far ahead. I haven't. You're like, waiting until it's a nice problem to have. Just to give you a little background, uh, when I started this project was this Christmas, six months ago. Oh, cool. Or is it more than that now? Uh, we're in August. <laughs> When I did uh, an article for the year-end Christmas calendar, pro, what is it called? Um, Advent, calendar. Advent calendar, yeah. I'm so bad with these names. Um, so there I was talking about potentially doing a project like this. Uh, and now I'm doing it. So I, this is like a few month project it's right now. Impressive. Well, that's a little bit immature still. Like, I find a lot of problems every day with it. But as time goes on, I think I'll find less and less of those problems, and then I'll face those real challenges that you're talking about. <laughs> I don't have any time to help you. <laughs> <laughs> you're more than welcome. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you.